Welcome to Smart Money. I'm your host Ibrahim Sani. Recently, iPrice developed the map of e-commerce Malaysia, which ranks the country's top e-commerce sites based on a bunch of stuff, including their monthly traffic, number of social media followers, and the number of staff that they have. Joining me to discuss this uh, is Jeremy Chu, content marketer from iPrice Group. Jeremy, thanks for joining me on the show. Let's talk with the whole reason of why. Uh, did iPrice come up with this list in the first place? Well, iPrice, uh, we are a price aggregator and we compare products in Malaysia. And with e-commerce being such a boom in Malaysia at the moment, we say, hey, why not we take a look at what is all the um, e-commerce in Malaysia and see how we can rank and see who are the leaders in e-commerce in Malaysia today, which is why we came up with this infographic. This, uh, so we'll come up with, the, we'll, we'll show the infographics very shortly, uh, but I just want to know how many people that you tested it on, what, how many e-commerce sites were, the, were were being uh, reviewed and so on. Uh, can you share us with a little bit of details on that? Sure. So what we did is uh, we took all the local e-commerce and also foreign e-commerce as well, which has a .my domain. And um, we brought them together and ranked them based on the number of um, visits that we got from similar web and even uh, the number of staff, as you mentioned, through LinkedIn and also the popularity on their social media pages, which is basically the Facebook Instagram and Twitter and this also includes the number of app downloads on Google Play um, however we didn't have information such as uh, revenues or even the consumer ratings because those were not publicly available so using this information we use that to rank the best e-commerce in Malaysia did you have to go through and get some qualitative measurements as well maybe down on the street um, not at the moment we actually use all these third-party um, services which is quite reliable to get all this information such as similar web they've been doing that for quite a number of years and a lot of players have used that to monitor the traffic one thing that I want to know is that uh, as a consumer there's a big problem with uh, e-commerce when, when it comes to uh, returning policy and, and, and mm. how customers can get more uh, in terms of money back guarantee that kind of stuff is that measured in this particular list or map of e-commerce King uh, unfortunately, because we were trying to rank the best e-commerce based on their popularity, which would somewhat uh, mirror their success. So because some of this information is a bit hard to get, um, unfortunately, we did not have that, but we use information that is uh, publicly available. Okay, uh, we'll talk yeah. more on that uh, uh, e-commerce map. That's coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. E-commerce king, that's coming up next. Welcome back. We're talking about e-commerce king and right now joining me is the content marketer of iPrice Group, Jeremy Chu. Uh, Jeremy, let's talk about the infographics. I can cue this particular first uh, uh, visual here. Uh, this basically talks about some of the map of the e-commerce Malaysia. Could you describe us on, uh, more on this map? Well, based from uh, the information we've got, at the moment, the king of e-commerce is undoubtedly popular to many, is Lazada. And second place is actually 11th Street, followed by Lelong. So as for this, we could see um, Lazada has placed a very strong hole on a very strong, strong hole in Malaysia. Um, with the number of um, traffic, you could see they've got about uh, 29, almost 30 million visits on their website on average for each month. That's the appeals in comparison with the second and third. They're yes. really far ahead in this sense. Yes. Uh, do you think you know why uh, this, uh, you could explain why the lead in terms of the uh, leadership uh, role in terms of uh, the uh, uh, unique web visits? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, one of the reasons we uh, assume can be because Lazada is backed by Alibaba and Jack Ma and they had great funding from them. And added with their years of experience in Malaysia, they have definitely gained a on-the-ground knowledge which actually have 
been very good for them in all the areas that they are, uh, operate, not just in Malaysia but in Southeast Asia as well. Also recently, about earlier this year, they even say that Malaysia is their fastest growing platform as compared with other countries as well. So they are definitely one of the best. And actually. of course, the growth uh, is anticipated to uh, be even bigger in the near term because of the DTFZ uh, that is being doubled down. Uh, Alibaba is going to be uh, investing more in terms of capacity building, not just for uh, Malaysian market but of course regionally. So do you think that any of the smaller e-commerce sites, you know, are they going to be able to rival uh, uh, Lazada quite extensively in the near future? Yeah, that's for sure. Um, we do not know exactly how it would be, but we could see there are some very new players as well, such as Hermo, who has been in Malaysia just for a few years, but they are actually ranking number two on the local, uh, the highest number of local brand uh, visits at the moment. Uh, okay, let's focus yeah. back on the uh, graphics just now. Uh, let's pull back the same graphic uh, mm -hmm. because this just covers the first uh, element just now. There's many other elements that we, uh, we can speak of. The, uh, what are the rest of the columns there? Well, for the first one that you could see over there, that's the traffic that is from similar web. Following from that is the number of app downloads um, that was taken only from uh, Google Play. The rest, uh, the third, the three ones after that is their social media sites. You could see Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And the last one is from LinkedIn, uh, from the number of employees. Okay, let's move on to the second uh, graphics here. This also ranks the same matrices but different companies. So these are the laggards, I would presume, right? Yeah, these are the local boys. So as we saw, Lazada is the king, but in terms of the local kings, it's still Lelong. Established mm -hmm. since 1998, they were actually one of the first to spot the e-commerce potential in Malaysia. Um, and we could see that very well. They have had about uh, 6 million over visits, um, almost five times compared with the number two, Hermo, which just has 1.2 million visitors. Uh, that, that's amazing for them to stay on for close to 20 years. Yeah. Um, the uh, sharing economy of the Malaysian market is still well and truly living. Uh, but there seem to be some controversies uh, with Lelong of late. Mm. Uh, do you think that that will impact the business of Lelong in the near term? Not as well, because we Recently, we saw they have tried to build um, their credibility in terms of setting up new payment gateways and different terms and conditions to protect both the sellers and consumers as well. So, as we could see over here, I think um, they're not really affected at all. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, infographics here that you have presented. Uh, so, what's this all about? Well, one thing interesting is when we saw the number of Instagram followers, it seems that when we compare the international and local guys, it seems that the local Local guys are winning in terms of the number of Instagram followers. Say, for example, one of them is Bella Amara. They themselves has more than 500,000 viewers, more than other brands as well. And as we question, why do they are they so good with Instagram? It's actually because most of them are owned by celebrities and social media influencers as well. In fact, Fashion Valley and a bunch of other uh, brands are there as well in this cluster of groups. So it means that the uh, the fact that it's being run by he by, by brand champions or brand heroes, i.e. celebrities. This drives the consumer to like these uh, 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 pictures or Instagram, right? Definitely, definitely. Since they are, in a sense, gurus of uh, Instagram and social media themselves, they definitely are using that um, to leverage that to market their products. And the thing is that one thing is funny is that we saw on their online site, it didn't necessarily mirror the number of uh, visits on their website. But nevertheless, they were also successful because they sold their things um, also through other methods which is uh, social media such as Facebook or even other sites as well such as uh, Lazada you will see other products by So, uh, so that Lala means the others. selling platform, the primary selling platform is on social media not necessarily on their app or their website Well one thing is that to diversify in different channels um, it will really s it will actually depend on what is their consumers' needs. So for them, like let's say Bella and Mara, they are a clothing um, fashion line. So one of the best ways to market that will be actually through Instagram. But to sell it, it might be on general websites like Lazada and Zalora. Okay, finally, we have the last infographic here that I want to share. Uh, this is very interesting. It tables down the leadership uh, of e-commerce. Uh, what is the key takeaway from this graph? 
Well, what we can see here is the number of average traffic that um, you see over there. And we can see, it, like we mentioned just now, um, the fashion products such as uh, fashion and cosmetics, such as Hermo, Zalora, and also local persons like Fashion Valley, seems to be more popular than even IT or gadget stuff. As we did this same study in Indonesia and um, Singapore and other countries, um, there were more uh, tech and gadgets, but not in Malaysia. I guess Malaysians were more into fashion products more than the tech and uh, mobile gadgets. Do you think that you will create more of these map of e-commerce uh, in the future? Perhaps refine this map or create uh, other maps of other sectors as well? Definitely. This is just our first version. On a quarterly basis, we'll keep this updated. So. From there, we can monitor um, which guys are rising up and which one might not. So we'll keep you updated in about the next quarter. The best part about this is that you guys are shifting away from just being a price comparison but being a value-add service. Uh, this is interesting on the, uh, in the iPrice Group. Uh, what can we expect in the near term from iPrice Group? Well, what we're trying to do here is to build brand credibility. And by coming up with all these searches, to show that we're not just about um, online shopping, but also the whole intelligence, which is consumer behavior and how our uh, e-commerce performing in Malaysia at the moment. All this consensus, and we're actually helping each other, both the consumers to shop better and also um, companies um, to perform much better to help the rise of e-commerce in Malaysia. Jeremy, thanks for having a chat with me. <clears throat> I've been speaking to Jeremy Chiu, content marketer of iPrice Group. And that's it for this episode. Send me your feedback on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But before we end this show, I want to remind everyone that on August 21st, the world will witness a full lunar eclipse. Here's a quick video of the event. I'm Ibrahim Saini signing off. Thanks for watching and good night. Thank <laughs> you.